In this example, I'd like to add a bit more space around the cut I've selected here in the center. The audio is playing back too fast and the listener will need a bit of rest before we jump from this topic, this section on the left, to the next section on the right. There are a few ways to go about uh, extending a strip, making some space, and uh, we are going to talk about ripple edit here. So um, to extend a strip first, there are two ways to go about it. You can select the handle, right click and drag on it to fire the grab operator, or right click to select it, and then press G to grab. And the other approach is to use the built-in extend function. For this, you need to have the time cursor somewhere on the strip, your mouse cursor to the right of the strip, and you press E for extend. This sounds like more operations than clicking and dragging, but while you are working, it's very convenient as often your time cursor will hover the strip while you are playing back your footage, for example, and your mouse cursor will often be on the right side of the strip. Uh, the reason you have to have the mouse cursor to the right is if you actually place it on the left, you're going to extend the left side of the strip, making this tool very versatile. Now, when you extend, you can see as you hover the next strip, your selection turns red, and it means that there's not enough space on the editing board to uh, place it. So if you click and validate here, the strip disappears. Actually, it's gone to the end of the sequencer where Blender found some space to place it. But now we're going to extend it and keep the Alt key down. When you do this, you toggle the ripple edit function on and ripple edit is going to make some space for your changes. So Alt click to validate and there's just one problem. You can see that the audio below the strip followed. When you have uh, strips that are synchronized, audio and video, it's not going to be an issue. But if you edit audio separately from the strip, like I do, you're going to have this effect. And I just want to cover this simple workaround. It's that you can negate the effect by just adding a cut right here, and you do the exact same thing. Now, because you don't have any audio behind the strip, it's not going to be pushed forward. So that's one way to add some space around your strip. It also works if I press E to extend, keep the Alt key down and click to ripple the edit. Note that with the power sequencer add-on, there are a few ways you can select a cut as well. Uh, for one, if you have a strip selected and press Shift G, you can grab a handle on the fly. So regardless of your mouse cursor's position, it's going to grab the closest handle. All right, this can be quite convenient because Shift G and you Alt click to apply Ripple the, the transform. And on top of that, I can cover uh, Alt G, which lets you slide the cut. So you're going maybe to cut this element and you can uh, select the left strip, extend it, Ripple edit. And if the cut is not that great, when you look at it on the preview, you can press Alt-G to grab a cut on the fly. The tool is going to find the closest cut for you. If I press Alt-G over this left cut, it's going to select it. If I press Alt-G, um, it can also grab handles for you, by the way. Um, if I press Alt-G over this cut, it's going to select it.